Welcome back to Mega Mechatronics. To my subscribers, I thank you for your continued support. Today, we're looking at my top five reasons why you will not be tuning or building a four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. You will enjoy the technical knowledge and insight coming from the mouth of Mega Man. Mega Mechatronics. Some people say normally aspirated, all motor, or NA, but you could find normally aspirated in some technical literature. And what I mean when I say tune or build, I mean adding at least 50% more horsepower. We're not talking about your hot air intake butt dyno business. Did you, are you full throttle? I also did a top five reasons why you will build or tune a four cylinder. Check out that video. So please enjoy, like, and subscribe. The first reason you won't be tuning or building a four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine is because you need to spin the crap out of it. You need to increase the engine speed or the engine RPM in order to move more air through the engines, to increase the flow rate through the engine. And in order to make this happen, in order to be able to spin the crap out of your engine, you have to upgrade the rotating assembly. And the rotating assembly actually has a lot of components that you need to upgrade or make sure can handle the extreme speeds, engine speeds or RPMs. So you're gonna need upgraded crankshaft, upgraded rods, upgraded pistons. You'll probably need to blank out or remove the balance shafts. You'll need a certified flywheel and clutch or flex plate and torque converter depending on if you're an auto or manual transmission. You'll need an upgraded harmonic balancer, again certified. You'll likely need upgraded oil pump gears, so something like billet or post treated or hardened or shot peen gears so that they don't explode and, and take out your engine. And finally, you're gonna have to underdrive your accessory somehow. So your power stirring pump and alternator are going to be spinning past their limit Limits, so you'll need a way to underdrive those with a smaller pulley or smaller harmonic balancer pulley which will reduce the speed on the accessories or you change the pulleys on the accessories themselves. The second reason you won't be building or tuning a four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine is because you have to upgrade the crap out of the intake track and the exhaust track. With the factory head, you're limited and you're restricted. If you were able to spin the engine with the factory components, the factory intake and cylinder head and exhaust system, it will choke out because it's re being restricted because we spun the engine faster to increase the airflow rate. So if we increase the airflow rate, we're creating restrictions using the factory setup. So the first thing on the intake track will be a huge throttle body and obviously a huge air filter feeding that throttle body. You don't want pressure drop across your air filter. That's lost power and that's easy stuff that you can solve. So we got this huge throttle body. You probably got it from a V6 or a V8. After the throttle body, you're gonna have a big smooth intake pipe feeding your huge manifold. So you got a huge plenum on this manifold because it's tuned for high RPM with short, big runners that are feeding your ported head. So your head is gonna have to be ported extremely. This isn't a little polished job. This is removing a lot of material and you have to do it very consistently. It's almost an art. However, instead of the big single throttle body and big plenum and intake runners, you can just go to individual throttle bodies to reduce restriction further. And also on the exhaust side, we're not building a tow truck here. We're building a full send machine that's spinning the engine to the moon, so you're gonna need a huge exhaust header and a huge exhaust system. Of course, it's possible to go too big for your engine, for your engine size, displacement, speed, but it's gonna be a lot bigger than stock. And the third reason you won't be tuning your four cylinder NA engine is because you have to upgrade the crap out of the valve train. You need to upgrade the valve train extensively to compensate for the increased masses and inertias from the huge cam and huge intake and exhaust valves. So you'll need as big of valves as you can get because the valves are what controls the airflow going into the cylinder. So this is extremely important. So you want gigantic valves and you want the biggest lift possible for your application and what's possible with your setup. So a bigger throat area from the bigger diameter valve and the larger lift is going to create a lot less restriction. For the camshaft to transfer this increased speed and lift and accelerations is you're gonna have to upgrade your roller finger followers 
and lash adjusters. So you'll probably go to a billet roller finger follower and solid lash adjusters where you have to shim them. Some engines actually have cups, so you may be in a better position there, but there are some limitations to the cup style. And most important, and obviously, you're gonna have to increase the spring force, the valve spring force to increase the load to compensate for those masses and inertias so you don't float the valve. So extremely high RPMs, you need that valve lobe to stay in contact with the valve train, stay in contact with the bucket, stay in contact with the roller finger follower and everything in between. And along with the higher load springs, you'll be running titanium retainers and probably in a race application, hardened seats so that the springs don't eat into your aluminum heads. So now we hit the fourth reason why you won't be tuning or building your NA4 cylinder engine is because you're gonna hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe. <laughs> The fourth reason is you're going to have to go to high compression. Since you're at a disadvantage, you need to get the most out of every combustion cycle. We can do this by increasing the compression ratio to something insane like 14 to 1, 15 to 1, or 16 to 1. This is a mechanical way to increase peak cylinder pressures and it's very effective. Cylinder pressure is what pushes down on the piston, which translates through the rod and crank arm into rotational torque. If you increase cylinder pressures, you increase rotational torque, and this is what we want. So some ways you can increase your compression ratio is by shaving your head down to reduce chamber volume, or get aftermarket heads with smaller chambers, you can increase your stroke, or you can use dome pistons, and any combination of these. With that, you'll need upgraded head gasket sealing and head bolts as well. And in extreme applications and certain blocks, you may need to girdle them to prevent cracking your liner from the excessive cylinder pressures. And also very importantly, if you're going with high compression or extremely high compression, you're always gonna have to run high octane race fuels, and that can get expensive. And the fifth and final reason you're not gonna tune or build a four cylinder engine is because you have to upgrade the electronics. So we're looking at a standalone ECU because you're probably going to be exceeding the factory calibration tables. And you'll also need to adapt to aftermarket or swapped components like the drive-by-wire huge throttle body. And along with that, you want upgraded ignition system. You'll have more flexibility going to a standalone. And you'll have to think about the fuel system like fuel injectors and the fuel pump. Okay, so that's it for my top five. Of course, I didn't cover every detail, so this is sort of my opinion, but I think I covered a lot of the major topics, and you'll agree, so leave a comment below if I said something wrong, if you disagree. And remember, I have a reasons why you will build a four-cylinder NA engine. Wait for that video, check out that video, and just go crazy. All right, this is Mega Man. Thank you for watching.